Hi everyone! In the past year, this YouTube channel has shared 40 videos on the topic of programming and web design. In 6 months, 5 million views. The number of subscriptions has increased from 30,000 to 142,000. All thanks to the support and comments from everyone. Thank you very much. In this video, let's look back at the journey of the past year. With the topic, Top Most Interesting CSS Tips and Tricks. In a video titled, A Line of Code from a CSS Master. I mentioned the masonry layout design style, also known as the Pinterest layout in the design community. The most prominent feature of this design is that it does not force the height value for the elements, which means that the elements will have completely different sizes. For example, I have a list of images here. If I use grid CSS, it will not be possible to solve this problem because grid and CSS works according to the row and column rules. The items on a row are all aligned, which also creates extra space in the layout. And if you use Flexbox and CSS, add the flex wrap property to allow the items to go down the row. The height value of the elements is now stretched to be equal. Of course, this is not what we want. Many people think that to solve this design, we will have to use an external library. You can completely solve it with the columns attribute in CSS. With the columns count attribute, you will specify the number of columns for the design, then the items will automatically be divided equally into columns. Or you can use the columns attribute with the value of the column size you want. For example, here I set it to 300 pixels. Then the number of columns is not fixed. During the responsive process, the browser will automatically check and create the corresponding number of columns. With the requirement to ensure that each column has a minimum width of 300 pixels. In case you want to use the columns feature to make the columns automatically responsive, but want to limit the maximum number of columns that are created. Add a second parameter to the columns property. This parameter will act as the maximum number of columns that are created. Our second video is two CSS ways to modify website design based on device interface. And the way to create it is actually in the thumbnail. Light dark is a color function in CSS, allows you to quickly customize the design color according to the device interface. However, to be able to use this color function, you first need to declare the color scheme property at the root CSS. By default, elements that do not have a default background color and text color declared. It can automatically change color according to the device's theme color. Impressive, right? If you just want to rely on the device's theme name to customize the interface to your liking, use the light dark function. The first color will be used when the device is in light mode, and the second color will be activated in dark mode. Interesting, right? Based on it, you can create an optional interface function according to the device interface. In this video, I also mentioned another way to create this function. You can watch more in that video. The next project is called Crazy CSS using by Master CSS. This is a video that I really enjoyed, still on the same topic. My CSS code can replace a lot of JavaScript work. For example, in this case, you may notice that normally CSS can only create animation when hovering on a certain element. But here I can affect many different items, even though they are not the object I'm hovering. What's more, each item has a different transition state. Here I have a list of images. By default, I have added some properties in CSS to make it dark. Normally in CSS, to transform an element hover, we will do like this, right? So if you want to create hover for the element on the right of that item, you just use the plus sign and the asterisk. Then this will be the result. Likewise, the more pairs of plus signs and asterisks you add, the more items you can manipulate on the right. And you can completely customize it to your liking. When you add has in front, the plus and asterisk character pair will now help you manipulate the items to the left of the hovered element. And likewise, the more plus and asterisk character pairs you have, the more items you can manipulate to the left. Our next CSS tip and trick comes from the video multi-layer parallax scroll animation with HTML and GSAP. You heard right, although this is a video with a focus on GSAP, it has an interesting HTML CSS trick that only those who watch this video will recognize. With multi-layer designs, normally programmers will use the position property, combined with top, left, right, bottom, and sometimes even the transform property to fix the elements. However, with this method, you will have trouble in the responsive process, 
because the screen size changes. The positions aligned by the margin will also change, and so your design will be broken. You will have to spend some time on responsiveness. But if you use SVG to fix these images, you will no longer need to do the responsive step, because the position of these images is now always fixed no matter what device you are on. This trick will be extremely useful in designs like Parallax, or any design that requires you to arrange too many layers on top of each other. The next project is from the crazy 3D rotation effect using CSS only video. As the name suggests, in this video I created a 3D animation using only CSS. The key to this design is that you need to prepare a Coke can as a mock-up. Note that this Coke can must have a transparent background. The image next to it is actually just any image you want to paste on the Coke can. Once you have enough resources, just create a background image, which is the soda mock-up image. Then continue to insert the image you want to paste on the soda in front. At this point with the background blend mode property, these two images will be blended together, creating the feeling that the image has actually been printed on the soda bottle. Finally, to cut off the excess parts, use mask image. Cut off the excess parts according to the mock-up image. In each background image, there are actually two parameters. These two parameters will represent the left and top position of the image. I will create a variable in CSS to determine the left position of this background. When the user hovers on the soda element, I just change the left value of the background. This will create an effect like the soda bottle is spinning. Best Trick CSS follows by combining SVG and CSS to create a new and extremely attractive text animation effect. First, you need to use applications like Figma or Adobe Illustrator to be able to export text in SVG format. After exporting, you will receive a code like the following. Just paste it where you want to display. First, let's edit this SVG text to your liking with CSS. Regarding the border in SVG, if you use the dash type, when setting the size of the dash too large, it will no longer create a stroke in the model range. More specifically, if the position of the first dash line is equal to the size of the dashed, you will not be able to see the border. Applying this technique, you just need to create an animation by reducing the value of the dash affix to zero, then you will get an effect like drawing each stroke to form the letter. If you find it still a bit confusing, watch this video, where I will have more time to guide in detail. Number 7. In this list of best CSS tips belongs to the video Crazy Ink Animation Effect with CSS only. You are probably familiar with the image effects that are cut to create stains like spilled ink or smoke like this, right? But what I want to talk about is this effect. In fact, this effect can be achieved with just these three lines of code. The element using this property will be cropped to the shape of the image contained in the mask image. So if you want to create the same effect as the beginning of the video, you just need to replace the mask image with a video mask with animation here. Unfortunately, that's not possible because masks don't support videos. Here you will have a few options. You will convert a video with ink animation to GIF format or SVG format. Note that you will need to remove the background for it. Then you will be able to use it here. Eighth place goes to create crazy 3D image slider effects using CSS only. This has been one of my most successful videos in recent times, helping my content reach a wider audience. Of course, each slider will include many items, each item will contain an image. To fix, these items all use absolute position and inset. In the list class, which contains the list of all items, I declare a 3D transform style with a length of 1000 pixels. You can simply understand that now we can not only move items along the X and Y axis, but also the Z axis. And this Z is 1000 pixels from our eyes. I want to create a list of items that run in a circle with a circumference of 500 pixels. So in the item, I just declare the translate Z to be 500 pixels. Now back to the HTML. 
I just need to add the remaining items. Now the items are overlapping each other. I want the items to be divided into a circle. So here is the formula. A circle has 360 degrees. So the distance between each item is 360 divided by the total number of items. Because then I will have a formula, the position of each item will be equal to its position minus 1. Then we'll multiply by the average distance between the items. For example, for the first item, we will have the result of 0 degrees. The second item will be 90 degrees. So according to this calculation, we will have two parameters. If we use JavaScript, we can code to find its value. But because the title is CSS only, we will have to declare it manually here. After having all the parameters, I will go to CSS to do the rest. When you replace the formula, don't forget to wrap the variable with CSS's VAR function. And at the end, multiply the result by one degree so the browser understands the unit you want. The next thing is how to create a rotating animation for it. Don't think about changing the rotating value for each item. Imagine these games, it's clear that these chairs rotate in a circle when they operate, but the main axis which contains all these chairs is the rotating object. So now you don't need to spend a lot of time calculating the rotation for each item anymore, but instead just rotate a single element, which is the list class. And this is the result we will get. Our ninth place belongs to the video remove image backgrounds with one line of code from master CSS. As the title suggests, the highlight of the video is using a single line of CSS code to remove the background of an image. And that line of code is mix blend mode darken. In principle or dynamically, it will compare the image that is being declared with the background behind. Then it will compare on each pixel unit. At each position, the color with a higher level of darkness will be kept. Thanks to that, in some cases, the background of the product image has been removed immediately with a line of code. As for going into the details of how it works, how to know which color is darker, please watch this video where I have analyzed it very carefully with everyone. And finally, at the very end, we have the king of CSS timing functions. The goal of this video is to introduce to everyone an extremely powerful but little known CSS timing function, which is steps. When you search online, you will see many images like this. These are images that contain steps to create one or more small actions in just one image. When you set the width and height of an element to be able to see only the first image in that image, then you create an animation to move the background to the final position so that you can see all the remaining images. But if you replace the current timing function with steps, with the parameter being the number of steps in the image, then you get a new kind of transformation, as if the model is actually jumping. And when it's done, it might look like this. So we have just reviewed the list of top 10 best CSS tips and tricks introduced by me in the past year. There are many other interesting videos that have not been mentioned in this video. Is there any video that you wish was ranked but is not in this video? And which video CSS trick do you like the most? Don't forget to leave a comment to share with me. Your likes, subscriptions, and comments are the motivation for me to continue sharing interesting knowledge about programming and design. Once again, thank you for supporting me in the past time. Thank you very much. See you all in the next interesting videos.